You know, I really love the Word of God, and I think the Word of God can change your life. What you're about to hear today is one of those life-changing messages that I believe inspires people. It's down-home, what I call down-home grits, and helpful. So enjoy today's message, and watch it change your life. Praise God. I hope you picked up your sermon notes on the way in. If you didn't, raise your hand. The ushers will be glad to bring you one. Uh, we're trying to get the tradition set. On the, okay, just raise your hand if you didn't get one. They're also on the app. Uh, should you see them? Look around. You see these folks at their hands. That's only a few, but raise their hand. They're gonna, we're going to be all right. I am uh, glad that you are with us today. I am in a series that I had to change for a couple of sermons because I didn't think I should come from the storm talking about your intimate life. Uh, so, so I decided... <laughs> I decided to preach something more appropriate for today. Uh, and so in a couple of weeks, we're going to come back to it. But I'm going to give us a couple of week break, and we'll come right back, I promise. Uh, repeat the topic with me today, please. Say, what storms teach us? Next week, we'll talk about what families teach us, because there's a, in, there's a lot connected here uh, to this whole topic, and we'll pick up on that next week. But look with me at 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Whenever you go through something like this, where you have big storms come through town and you have to evacuate and you have all these things happen, there are a lot of questions that come to your mind. And depending on how you see it, if you look close, there's a lot of um, confusion. For example, one of the confusing things is the people in Florida praying that it goes to Georgia are <laughs> in that direction. <laughs> They don't want it to hit Georgia, but they don't want it to go to Florida. The people in Georgia are praying, all right, North South Carolina, we're praying. <laughs> Everybody's praying it away. Now, we all want to go in the ocean someplace, but we sure don't want to land here. And so you have to ask yourself, what about the places that it hits? And there's some theological confusion because the question is, did they pray? enough was there something wrong with their faith and, and and christians a lot of times don't answer direct questions they give little spiritual side answers but the real the real question to me is come on preacher man talk about this help me understand how this happens now i'm i'm not, i'm gonna avoid the uh, something i almost stepped into in this series i I was so disturbed by the storms and so disturbed by the size of the storms. You try to find the answer. You say, well, is it because of global warming? Is it because of the warming of the oceans, the ozone layer? So I dived into that whole study, and for, for several days I was reading books and going through all this stuff, and, and I, I decided, boy, there's a big fight over that that I'm not going to solve today. I'm not going to get up here and try to be a scientist. All I know is the storms are getting bigger. I do know that. And I know that the poor people are the ones who suffer. If you have, how many of you have been to the Bahamas? Raise your hand. You've been there. So you know. You've seen. You've seen. This nice place, great people. But this was a tragedy. And whatever the reasons are for this, if we, have, if we have anything to do with it, we need to stop doing it, pray up, we need to do something, care, because good people suffer when these things happen. And let me take a, a step further, go a step further for a minute. I believe that when Adam and Eve were given the planet, that God didn't take it back after they sinned. We are still responsible. We are stewards of this planet. And we should care about that. There is an assumption that somehow we live in this, in this very American way of thinking. Individual boxes. Our kids dream this dream. I want to grow up, get out of here, and get my own. House, husband, children, and you can't tell me what to do. That's the dream. It's a very American dream. A lot of parts of the world don't think that way. It's about us. That's why a lot of times when you go to certain stores, 
you see everybody in the family there. And when, <laughs> and when, they, when they have an opening, they send for another member of the family to come join. There's, there's a sense of us. Can you say us? us. And that's, that's what's lost. It is about us. I create a kid who gets out of control. Then somebody else has to tackle my kid to the ground. Everybody say us. us. We're in this together. We're not isolated. We send kids like arrows, the Bible says, into the world. We shoot them into the world. One, violent, confused. But he started, she started in your house. You ship her off to school, hope the school fix her. Ship her off to overcome by faith, hope Pastor Rick can fix her. But she crazy everywhere she go, amen. I'm not mocking, I'm saying it's true. Everybody say us. us. We're in this together. It's our air. It's our environment. It's our church. It's our city. It's our community. It's our neighborhood. It's our home. We need to think that way. Get our pronouns changed around a bit so that we understand that. So I, I can't solve it all. I don't have all the answers to it. I have my own opinions. But I've decided today to, to, to hide in the Bible. So take me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. That's why I find my best answers when I don't know what to say. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22. Today, my big point is going to be storms teach us how unprepared we are and how exposed we are. At the end of the day, when a storm comes by, whether it be a natural storm or an emotional storm or a financial storm, whatever kind of storms, they always expose the truth about us. They say a lot about us. Warren Buffett says something that I love. It's a quote that he says this. He says these words. It's only when the tide goes out that you discover who's been swimming naked. <laughs> you can look like you have a lot, but when the bills come in, we find out what you have. Paul was a guy that got my attention here because he lived in storms all the time. Paul was in physical storms, shipwrecked, you'll see, three times. And I, I wanted to just read a list of things he says to the Corinthian church. Now, he says it in response to criticism. In 2 Corinthians, he is responding to the uh, accusation that people, you know, pe well, people, let me say this way, people got angry with him because of all the things he said to them in 1 Corinthians. And they basically said, who is he to write us this kind of letter and tell us off and tell us about our sexual behavior and tell us what we shouldn't do? Who is this guy? And so Paul sets out to speak to them. And here's what he says in verse 22. In response to the people who spoke to him, he said, are they Hebrews? He says, so am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Are they ministers of Christ? Well, he says, I speak as a fool. They consider me to be foolish. Now, here's what he's saying. They say they're qualified. Well, I'm qualified too. So what he's doing is putting his resume up against their resume. He says, I'll tell you what. You say you know what it's like. Well, let's, let, me, let me tell you my life. Now, there are 26 things I'm going to say quickly. Now, <laughs> please, with Paul, you could have 36. But in this chapter, in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, through about verse 20, 28, he describes his journey. Listen to what he says. I am more. Now, what I did for you was I took those verses and I put them in, in a row. I put them in, in, like a, in, a, in a list for you so you could see it more clearly. He says, they say what they are, but I am more. I am more in verse 20, 23. In labors, more abundant. In stripes, above measure. In prisons, more frequently. In deaths, often. In other words, I've been to prison more often, I've been beat more often, I've labored more harder than them, I've been close to death more often. Are you with me number six? Say amen if you are. Amen. From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. That's 39 whips. Now, please catch that. That's stretched out, and you get the long whip with the cat tails on it, and you hit him with the metal. It's, it's a bloody mess. And they hit him 30, 29 times with that. He's 39 times, I'm sorry. So here's a guy who was beaten with rods, he said three times. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked. That'd make you stop cruising. 
<laughs> That'll get you off the cruise boat right there. Shipwrecked three times. Then beyond that, he says, and number 10 in your notes, he says, a night and a day I've been in the what? Deep. I, I, and you think about that. I did, I did tread water for a night and a day, holding on to some piece of something, a boat or whatever out there. Now, you know what? After a night, you just say, well, Lord, I'm coming to see you. That's it. <laughs> but then a day, a night and a day, that's a long time to be in the water. And you know what? And to get back on a boat again, you somebody. <laughs> he says, on number 11, he notes, in journeys often, travels a lot in perils of water, perils of robbers, Look at that peril, right? been robbed. He said, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in the wilderness. Now, there you go. We got animals out there in the wilderness. In perils in the sea, perils among false brethren, in weariness and toil, in, in sleeplessness, in hunger and thirst, fastings often, in cold, naked, been naked before. <laughs> Besides the other things. Can you say that with me, please? Come on. Besides the other, there's a whole lot more I can say. That's what he's saying. I've had a journey. What comes upon me daily, he says, my deep concern for all the churches. He says, I've been in storms. And let me tell you what storms teach you. You ready? See, you done turned the page. You wrong. Turn back. <laughs> Think you know where you're going. You got yourself all figured out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Here you go. Here's what storms teach us. First of all, repeat with me, please. They teach us how tough we are. Then secondly, they teach us how prepared we are. And thirdly, they teach us we can't keep all of our stuff. You look at Paul's life and you measure yourself against it and you say, <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at the things you're complaining about in your life and compare yourself to it. Here's what I believe is true. Storms are going to come in some form forever. Natural storms, life storms, financial storms, emotional storms, they come. The question is, how tough am I? Am I, am I the kind of guy that can bounce back from that? Now, here's the thought I had for about uh, five seconds. This storm came, and I was not wanting to leave home. I, I, I just was in that don't leave mood, and I thought, first of all, I ignored it. I didn't watch the news. I just didn't want to hear about it. I just believed God's word. It's going to go past me. Hallelujah. And it kept on coming. You can't pray away every storm. You have to learn how to stand against a storm. You have to learn how to go through a storm. You can't push away everything. You, you, and Christians have this real idea, we're going to just bind the devil. And sometimes it ain't the devil. It's just, it just is. It's just a storm coming your way. If the devil had the power to send storms, he'd been killed you a long time ago. He, he, he would have been wiped you out. It's, it's, we we want to abdicate responsibility for our planet to, and blame everybody and everything. And sometimes, if we're honest, we created the storms. Who spent your money? Who charged up that car? The devil? No, it was you. Look in the mirror. You did that. One, two, three, four. It, it was all you. I mean, it, 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 the relationship storm. How, who cussed the person out? That was you. Who, who, who swung first? Who, who, put yourself in this, in this movie, please. You're part of this storm. Storms come, and I just can't avoid them. So I, for a few minutes, I thought, a few seconds, I said, maybe I need to move someplace else. I said, I need to, I need to go. And I started thinking, I said, eh, eh, no, no, I'm, I'll stay here. I just have to deal with the storms. Because if I move someplace else, something else is going to come. I might move to L.A. or an earthquake get me. I might move to the mountains and a lion might chase me. I might as well just hang in here. I might just hang, just hang in here. I'm going to fight wherever I am. Come on, lift your hand with me and stay with me, please. Say, I am not in heaven yet. Not in heaven yet. Say it again. Come on, say, I'm not in heaven yet. Not You're not in heaven. So get that in your mind. Storms teach you that you're wimpy. <laughs> Whining at everything. 
complain because it's not perfect. I see people, they pray to become a pastor. They pray. <laughs> they say, oh, they're so excited. We're a pastor. I'm going to preach the word. And you know what they see? The suit. They see the, 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 the moment in front of the people. Thus saith the Lord. They want to do that, right? Oh, but they don't see the bills. <laughs> they, don't see the, they don't see the expense. It's several million dollars to do this every year. You can't do Where you going to get it from? Where you going to get it from? What you going to do? You get, can't get a pen big because they look at you funny when you do that. You know what? You, see, can everybody say storm? Storms come. It's part of the journey. You have to know how to manage storms. You dreamed, you prayed, you asked God, and now you're crying about it. I kid you not. This is the truth. <laughs> I say this every week. I say to people, and you've heard me say this, how did I get a job where well, I'm always in front of people? That's what I say sometimes. Sometimes I come in here, I just don't want to get in front of you. He said, well, that don't work, Pastor Rick. You kidding me? No, I'm serious. How many of you are surprised I said that? Raise your hand. You're surprised. Oh, you're not good. Praise God, because you know me. I, I really and truly at times don't want to get in front of anybody. I want to prepare the sermon but not deliver it. Just let you read it and go home. Praise God. That's good. It's an emo- Sometimes emotionally, it just wears on you. And that's what your dream is like. Those kids, the things you ask God for. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Say amen if you're with me. There are times in your life when what you prayed for leads you to a storm, a challenge. And it teaches you how tough you are. So I have little things I say to myself. My name is Ricky Temple. I do not quit. I do not surrender. I do not bow. I do not give up. That's what I tell myself. Get up and go. Come on, boy. Come in here. Fix yourself up. You go in there today and do your job and trust God, and you'll be fine. If you don't do good, do good the next time, but keep on trying. But don't give up. Come on, say amen. Don't give up. So the first thing storms teach you, storms teach you how tough you are. But the second thing storms teach you is found in Matthew 25, and I'm not going to read the story. Read it on your own, Matthew 25. If I was going to die, I told you this would be my last sermon. The virgins, the ten virgins, are one of, it's one of the most powerful stories I believe in the Bible. It's just incredible. It has been a key help to me. Because here's what I've learned. When storms come, when challenges come, it teaches you how prepared you are. A lot of things that we, people struggle with because they're not prepared for it. Now, if, you, if a storm comes in and you've got evacuation money, you just get in your car and go on vacation. You don't worry about it. You just get the gas up because you got gas money. But if you don't have gas money, you have to pray and find a ride. <laughs> if your car is in good shape, you ain't worried about it. You get in your car, you, you know, but if some of you know them tires been bald all. You, just, <laughs> you know you're going to be on the side of that road. You know it's coming. You know it. You get to the hotel, you can't check in. No money. You can't stay with a day. You hope the storm go in one day because that's all you got. One day, your credit card's at the max. You know what I'm saying? See, so it's a lot of things that make it hard. And then if you call people, you can't go stay with them long, and they want to know how much you're going to give them to eat there. And you, you know, they won't give you free food. So it's a lot of things that get into evacuation. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not prepared, it's hard. In Matthew 25, this story about these ten virgins all going to a wedding, and they all had lamps, and they were supposed to get oil for their lamps. Well, five of the, five of the oil, women decided to have oil. They prepared. They took enough oil so that when, the, when they needed to go into the wedding, they could just put their oil in and take off. Five that were foolish didn't take any oil. They didn't prepare. And what I like about this story is because it shows the power of deciding in advance. It shows that you have the responsibility to invest in your future in advance. It's really important for you to understand that you decide to either be wise or you decide to be foolish. Let me help you for a second. You ready? Right now, today, if you died, who would bury you today? Today, right now, right now. Is there any insurance policy anywhere that has your name on it that will help somebody bury you? Okay, so if the answer is no, okay, well, who's going to do it? You're putting that on somebody else. 
You're assuming that somebody else is going to do that. Well, they love me. Now, I'm in a family. I love my family. No, no, I'm not making any harm. But I have had to be a part of these offerings where people didn't have insurance. That's how you empty a room, by the way. You want to empty the room at the funeral? Or the, 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 the fact, just mention they didn't have any insurance. Everybody, oh, I got to go, man. I, I can't. Shoot. Wow. How much is it? $6,000. Woo. We need to just burn them up. We can't have what? Woo. We need to. We, we <laughs> oh, you empty the room. I deal with funerals every week. And I'm telling you right now. I, somebody died. I mean, the church our size is always something happened like that. I had two, three this last week. It's always something going on. But here's the deal. Here's the deal. Most of us are guilty of making this mistake. We are more on the foolish side than on the wise side. We tend to assume it's somebody else's responsibility. If you listen to even when you're looking for a maid or you're looking for a man, listen to what you say. I'm trying to find a man with some money. Really? Why don't you bring some money? Oh, come on, give me amen. Come on, why not bring some money? You mad with me now? You mad because I said that? Don't be mad with the brother. I mean, there are guys who say the same thing. I, I, I'm just saying, notice that this story in Matthew 25 is about people who looked at the future and refused to prepare. They assumed it was somebody else because later on in the story, they asked the wise virgins for some of their oil. And their response was, we can't do it because we won't have enough for ourselves. Now, freeze that for a minute. Do you understand that in storms, you start realizing what you have and don't have? The tide's out now. And the problem is everybody can't help you. I had to learn that one. Sometimes people want to help me, but they can't. They're fighting their own dragons. They're in the ring, rousing their own demons. And then you, you come along saying, can you help me? No, not now. I'm in the headlock. No. <laughs> I, can't, I can't help you right now. And you get offended. I thought you loved me. It's not about me loving you. These five wise virgins made a statement. We can't. And there are times people can't. And you need to learn that now. That's why you should prepare. There are things that will come upon you physically. And if you don't prepare your body for aging, Lord have mercy. It's like rigor mortis. <laughs> I tell the left leg to move. He said, I ain't going nowhere today. <laughs> get up. I need you to get on up there. Get on. I need you to move. I, and, you know, I was, and then you sometimes you, your balance get off. You can't. I, I, I find myself a wobbling. I said, well, what's happened? I, was, I got out the car the other day, and, I, and, and it's like my whole body said, sit down. I said, I can't sweat. <laughs> my whole body. <laughs> Aching, I said, the devil is a liar. What is in the world is this? It's 61. That's what that is. That's 61. <laughs> Woo! Jesus. Man. You know, if I'm going to get in a fight, I said, can you hold on a minute? I got to stretch, man. Hold on. I got, I got to do something here. I can, oh, God, this is bad, Father. Help me. Jesus. This is awful. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> I mean, and if you don't prepare, you don't prepare. And you just, I watch people, and I, sometimes I, I just say, God, I don't say anything. But I just I said, to them, oh, jeez, what are you doing? Give me a triple, double T, quadruple size, super size that, five triple burger with four slices of cheese, eight pounds of mayo, and ten ounces of, of ketchup. I'm saying, key, key, and a sweet... Uh, pie. Just give me the whole thing. And I'm just I'm saying, what are you preparing for? Death? What are you doing? You're being a foolish virgin. I want you to see you're, you're on the foolish side of this. We've all been there. I know. I understand. I love to eat. I understand. But sometimes I have to talk to myself. Temple, you're not doing that today. You're not doing that today. No, no, no. You're not doing that today. No, sir. And it's an argument. If you heard me, you think he cracking up. You say he cracking up because it's an argument. It's a flat-out argument. I want some chips now. Barbecue, super hot. I want them all. I want everything. I 
I want, I mean, I have to fight, and I have to, and, and the staff laughs at me, my wife laughed at me, my kids, you know, it's, it's a fight. And my, my little grandbaby, she's so funny, she said, Papa, I bought you what you like. I said, what you buy me, baby? She said, I bought you some milk duds. I bought you some milk duds. She bought me a jump. <laughs> she made her mama buy them in the store. She said, Papa, I like milk duds. But she said, but he ain't going to eat but five. <laughs> He ain't going to eat five of them. That's it. Just a taste. Throw the rest away for life. I sacrifice this in the name of Jesus. But I have five. Praise God. I'm, I'm trying to live, but it's a fight. Come on, say, I'm preparing. I'm preparing. Oh, come on, say it again. Say, I'm preparing, I'm preparing. For, my for my future. You didn't even join me. Say it again. Say, I'm preparing, I'm preparing. For, my for my future. For my storms, for my storms. That, will that will come. Give God a big hand clap if you got me. You got me? You right? Here's the last thing, and I'm done. Last thing in the storm teaches you. It teaches you can't keep all your stuff. I, you know, I, 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 leaving home and thinking that this storm could destroy everything I have is a profound moment in your life. I can lose everything. You, you learn you can't take everything. The first, years ago, when you go through this the first time, you pack up everything. You pack up all kind of pictures. After a while, you said, look, I just remember them in Jesus' name. After a while, you said, shoot. I'm not dragging all these pictures and all this stuff out of here. I'm getting insurance papers and myself out of here. A friend of mine had me laugh, and he was in one of those areas where the fires, a bunch of fires broke out. And he said, he ran over there to get his brother. He said, come on, let's go. Let's pack up. He said, pack up what? He said, man, I got my insurance papers. Let's drive. He said, forget it. He said, I can't carry all that stuff. I'm going to sit here and burn up trying to carry all that stuff. He said, look, you see the fire? He said, we leaving, bro. I forget it. You can't, you can't take all your stuff. I told you the other week, I said, everything you have is leased. Believe it or not, somebody's going to get this jacket, but not today. <laughs> Somebody's going to get it. Somebody's going to get it. Because I know some of you are going to come to me and ask for it after church. <laughs> Y'all always do, and I say no. I'm telling you now. But that, it's just part, you know, but is somebody going to get it? Somebody's going to get it. Your shoes, your house, every house you've lived in before, somebody else lives in it now. Every piece of clothes you used to have, hopefully some of them you got rid of now, somebody wearing them. There's something about understanding you can't keep your stuff. Jesus made a statement. This is in Matthew, Matthew 6. Here's what he said. This is important. Man, this is a great verse. Matthew 6, 19. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth. Man. Where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moss nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart be also. Now I want to pause for a minute, because somebody's saying that. Rev, Pastor Rick, now what you're trying to say, don't treasure anything, don't value anything, don't dream to get a house, don't dream to have nice stuff. No, I didn't say that. You just got to watch where you put your soul at. It's when you walk away from stuff and you have to leave it. And you may not see it again that you realize I can't value that more than me, more than my walk with God. I can't allow myself to be controlled by something that I, that I can't control. It's really amazing. Some of you were in a marriage and it didn't work out and you treasured the marriage more than yourself. You treasured your friendship, that job, the position, the title more than yourself. You're, you are not focused on the real big priorities in your life. The healthiest thing about me, I think, is I'm really not trying to be a big shot. I don't put that on my priority list as a treasure. I'm clear that for me, for me, I need to keep my mind and heart in the right place. I need to pause in that storm when you're driving off and you're praying for your house and you're praying for your property. In that moment, everything changes. When you stand in that hospital room like I did this past year, more than I wanted to. And I watched in one situation 
the whole family stretched out on the floor. Wow. Storm is here. They ask you to come be the storm helper. In that horrible moment when a baby died. On another moment, years ago, I can think of several of them. When I walk in the room and they grab me and say, Pastor Rick, in those moments, I pray a prayer. Why don't you stand with me? I'm going to teach you the prayer. Stand with me. Here's what I pray when my storms come. Lord, I trust you. Say that with me, please. Come on. That's it. That's all I'll say. Sometimes I look at them and I don't know what to say. And so I whisper a prayer. Lord, I trust you for the words. I trust you for the grace. I trust you for peace. When I'm faced with a large array of issues, I say, Lord, I trust you. There are moments when I'll have a lot of work that I must do. A lot of work. Mounds of work. And then I'll get a phone call. And I have to leave all the work and attend to the people. And you know what I say? I look at the work and I say, Lord, I trust you. You'll let me catch that up. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will prompt me. Get ahead in your work. Work hard for the next two days. Get way ahead because he knows what's coming. And so when I feel that prompting, sometimes Dante is late at night, sometimes it's early in the morning. I'll get up and I'll work hard for hours and I don't know what. And then the next two days, all hell will break loose. And, and then I say, see, I'm glad I trusted you because you were preparing me Right now, God is speaking to you about some things in your life. And I'm going to do something for just a moment. A part of this message, for whatever reason, has touched you. And you say, Pastor, I want you to pray with me. Come on to the altar. I'm going to take a minute. And we were a couple of minutes early. Please come. I don't know who it is and what speaks to you in this message that makes you say, I want to just, if, you, if you're going to have a prayer call, I want to just step out for a minute. I don't know what your circumstance is. Step up. Come closer to the altar. I just want to pray. If you're home today, I want you to know that your God cares about you and your circumstances. All the storms that you face. All the things that have come up in your life that you didn't expect. God is the God who can help you through your storms. But you have to do what? Trust Him. Come on, say, Lord, I trust you. Even coming to the altar today is a step of faith for some of you. It's you saying, I trust you. I come, I come with a desire, oh God, for you to touch my life, my marriage. I'm in the middle right now counseling several marriages that are going through some very difficult seasons. And uh, I told some of them, I'm just going to pray with you for a few days. Let me just pray and come back to you because I know that God is able. Some of them look hopeless, but I, when I look at those moments and I know their circumstances and the pain that they live through, I said, Lord, I trust you to give me the words. I trust you to intervene. Some of them, God has already intervened. Some of them sent me back a note and said, it's better than it has been, Pastor. God has stepped into our marriage. Our conversation helped her. Just you praying for us helped. But I believe that God is able. Come on, say amen. You believe it? I believe it. Come on, God is able to help you. I trust you. Father, I thank you for everyone at this altar and those who are home and those who are standing. Some, some of them, their hearts at the altar with us. I speak healing, I speak blessing, I declare in Jesus' name that the hand of God will be upon every need that's expressed at this altar today. And Lord God, you will bring healing to them, but you will also inspire them to be stronger. You'll inspire them, Lord God, to, to, to rise up to a new place. You'll, you'll inspire them to prepare. You'll inspire them to not worry about their stuff because it's all temporary anyway. And they'll just trust you. 
and to give you, give you, we give you honor and glory in the name of Jesus. Now I'm going to tell you one last thing and let you go. I watched this movie one time and I forgot the name of it now. It's a, it's a, something about something, the number warrior or something. But anyway, the name of the movie, the, in this line in the movie, the, the guy had one sword left and the sword was all they had and he didn't have a weapon. And so they gave it to him to fight with and he dropped it. He said, it's too heavy. And they looked at him and said, it's the only one we got. Grow stronger. That, that line spoke to me. If you want to live, you're going to have to be stronger than this. Come on, say man. You hear me? I don't have another weapon. And so I assume over time he started working out with that weapon. He learned this is the only thing between me and death. I must learn to get past whatever grieves me. You're going to have to grow stronger, Mom. I'm sorry. That boy is going through right now. You're going to have to grow stronger. You cannot whine. You cannot fall out. You cannot lose your mind. Come on. You can't do that. As a society, we must grow stronger. We cannot allow ourselves to be intimidated. We cannot allow ourselves to be afraid. We cannot be afraid of any financial responsibilities. We cannot be afraid of anything. We must rise above it. Let's lift our hands and pray. Father, we thank you today. In Jesus' name, for what's been said, we leave this altar knowing that your hand is on us and believing that you have a purpose for our lives. We will rise above our fears and we will overcome our storms. The Bible said in Matthew 7, said that if we have you in our life when the storms come, when the winds and the waves come, it will hold us strong. And so we trust your word and we trust you in Jesus' name. Can you give God one more big hand clap? Come on, one big praise. Amen. We thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your blessing in our life. We trust you. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory. Amen. Every, every head bowed, every eye closed. If you're here today and you say, you know, Pastor, after hearing everything today, I want to start my walk with God in a new way. And I want you to pray for me. I want to leave out of here today knowing that I've committed my life to Jesus. And I, I just want you to pray for my walk with God. Uh, if you want that prayer, just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for. Say, hey, pray for me. I see one, two, I see three, I see, I see several hands. Father, I pray for these whose hands are up and some whose hearts are up. Let this be the beginning of a new walk with you. Let this be the start of a new life. Some have never really given their lives to Christ. They've been good people, but they've never made that commitment to God. And so this could be that first day, and we pray blessings upon them as they make that decision. In Jesus' name, and everybody say amen. Now look this way. If you raise your hand on. You know, when you hear the word of God and it inspires you, you have a chance to decide to change. You can hear a message and just hear it, or you can hear a message and apply it to your life. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray what they've heard today is something that they can put in their shoes and allow it to impart blessing and guidance to their life. I thank you for the power of your word and how it can change lives. And we invite you, Lord God, to take this message and change the direction of their life in Jesus name. My name is Ricky Temple. I pray you are blessed by it today. I'll see you next time right here as we study the word together 